Hey guys, Reaganite71 here. Back with you today, we're going to do a video on heat and how to bring your tomatoes back from the heat if they get zapped. I tell you what, it has been absolutely brutal out west this year with the heat. Uh, record high temperatures. Now we've got a high pressure ridge that's settled over our area and we're getting up into the high 90s and 100s every day. Let me show you what uh, the temperature is right now in the garden. Right now you can see our indoor temperature down at the bottom of my remote thermometer is at 75 degrees. If we come up we can see uh, the remote thermometer itself in the garden is showing 101. Anytime the temperature gets over 95 degrees and you get intense sun, it can stress your plants really bad. Tomatoes will start dropping blossoms, the fruit will uh, stop developing, and they can even crack and burst from basically boiling in their skins. Now there are some things that you can do to help your plants out during this hot time and also help them rebound. The first thing, and we're going to go through five things, the first thing that you can do is use shade cloth. I just happen to have a big bundle right here, yay! And we're going to put it to use today. Now you're likely to get a lot of cracked fruit when leaves start getting sparse or the leaves die out in the heat since there's less shade to protect them from the blazing hot sun. The shade cloth is going to relieve a lot of that stress and it will also help with water retention and keep your tomatoes from boiling and cracking in the skins. Now as far as shade cloth goes, I'm using a thin fabric seed and germination frost blanket. I picked this up on Amazon.com. This one is actually 2,250 feet long. Um, they also have them in a cheaper version, only six foot wide if you just want to put some top shade up for your plants. These actually will allow 85% light transmission and it will also allow rain to pass through it. Now if you'd like to pick up some of this, I'm going to put a link in the show more description section underneath the video and I'll also have a link up on the blog where you can find this kind of stuff to use for shade cloth for yourself. I think it's really important to protect the plants, give them some shade, and at the same time they're going to get light transmission, they're going to get rain if we can get any. <laughs> so this is very handy. I've got enough here to where I can actually cover the top and have it drape down on both sides if I wanted. I'm probably going to gather them up and uh, I'm going to go ahead and put this up now and you can see what it looks like once I get it up. Now because I have so much shade cloth, 250 foot roll, 24 foot wide, I have uh, pulled off more than I need so that I'll have enough to drape down on both ends and now I'll just go down there and cut it off and then bring it up and secure it with some clips. Now when it comes to actually securing the shade cloth to the frame, I'm just going to use some of these simple little garden clips for now. JohnnySelectSeeds.com has got the little PVC uh, clips. They've already got them milled down. You don't have to get a table saw out and go find the right PVC. that will actually clip onto half inch metal conduit. Found that the other day and I thought that was pretty cool. I'm probably going to order some of those. They're about an inch long and they'll secure it really good. But I'm just going to take these and do something like that for now and that'll get me by. Now that we've got the shade cloth up and on, I'm just going to get it tidied up, roll it up real good, and we'll have some protection from the sun. Well, now that we have shade provided for the plants, the next thing we need to think about is mulching. This is exceptionally important. Even after the heat is gone, the mulch can continue to help your plants, but when it's, when it's really kicked in like it is now, it's going to provide an extra barrier from the sun uh, to help retain moisture and to keep those root, root zones from really heating up. You can use straw, you can use grass that's dried out completely, um, whatever it takes. And what I like to do is I like to come in with some fresh compost and build up a nice layer around the uh, stems because that being nightshade family plants they'll actually put out new roots 
into what I build up with the uh, compost around it. The other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take some Happy Frog Organic Fertilizer which actually has active soil microbes. This is a 745 fertilizer and I'm just going to put maybe a quarter of a handful around each plant and then I'm going to build up with some fresh compost around it in that root zone. Lift up my drip irrigation to get it in here. And I'm going to do this around each of our plants to give them a little more buffer from that heat and to keep them healthy. Now the next thing we're going to talk about is watering. Fruit damage can occur when these uh, plants start to sizzle in the heat. So it's very important that they get more water than you had been giving them earlier in the spring when it was cooler. Earlier in the, you know, early in the spring I am liable to uh, only water once every day or two. I've actually got drip irrigation now. I've got it set up. I had it set up for every other day watering for about 40 minutes in the morning. Now I'm going to set it up to where every morning uh, I'm getting automatic watering for 40 minutes. I do it about 7.30 in the morning before the sun gets high. For buckets and container plants, you're going to have to come out and do it by hand unless you've got them sitting next to your bed and you run a drip, uh, some drip tubing over. But what I'm going to do now with my drip irrigation is I'm going to have it set up for every day 40 minutes. Every other day I'm going to add, you can, uh, my timer is actually programmable up to four times a day. I'm going to add programs to where every other day it's also going to kick on in the evening, early in the evening when the sun gets low. Uh, that way they're getting more water. And then I'll take a look at it, see how they're responding. If they need more, I'll adjust it accordingly. But don't forget your container plants. And over the next couple of weeks with all of this heat coming on, we're really going to get a good idea of what the shade cloth can do as we look at these container plants because I'm not going to put any shade over them. I'm just going to let them do what they do out in the sun keep the buckets watered. They're going to have to be watered every day, maybe twice a day, because they'll dry out really quick. Hopefully the coconut core will help, but they're going to need a lot of attention. Now, you want to try to keep the top five to six inches of soil moist during the heat wave. The best way to check is to just stick your finger in, don't damage the roots, but stick your finger in and see how moist it is. If it's dry as a bone, give it a little drink at the root zones. You want to do it early in the morning or late in the day if you don't have automatic water timing. And of course having the shade cloth up is going to help as well with that. But don't let them dry out. Keeping consistent moisture is going to also help you keep from getting blossom end rot. Especially when the plant goes back into production after the heat wave. And I'll tell you something else. As far as watering goes, it's better to water deep, deep, deep three times a week than to water lightly every day. By giving it that deep water, those roots are going to be able to access that later on uh, the next day because it will be down low to where the sun can't evaporate it so easily. Uh, if you decide to water every other day, you're also going to encourage root development downward to where that water's at. So that's a good thing. You may have a lot of leaves that just dry out and absolutely kick the bucket as they get baked in the summer sun. I suggest leaving them on until the heat wave is gone. What this is going to do is they are going to offer you some shade to the rest of your plants and your fruit that are still developing. Once the heat wave is passed, you can come through and just clip them off. Like so. The addition of the shade cloth is going to help a lot as well. My final tip is if you have any that are already turning or getting really close, go ahead and clip them off. See this one's already developing some cracking here. However, it's turned enough to where I can take this inside and it'll ripen up just fine. Uh, I've got some UV grow lights also that I can put it under, under our kitchen counter that'll help it along. This is going to be just fine. What I do is I take it, I put it under the light upside down and it helps uh, fully ripen the thing. But you can see some of that cracking right there that happens when that, that water heats up, expands, and cracks them up. 
but anything that you any kind of uh, tomatoes you've got that are going from green to yellow or yellow to orange you can go ahead and harvest those and that will uh, make it easier on your plants they're not going to be trying to get that produce that fruit off instead they can reserve that energy to survive and that's a good thing well guys this is Reaganite 71 I've had just about enough of the heat today I think we're at 107 right now and I am baking along with the plants hopefully they're not baking as bad because we're following those simple tips which include using shade cloth mulching proper watering pruning and leaving some of the dead leaves on until you get through the heat wave to provide additional shade I hope you found this helpful I uh, happy to bring it to you appreciate you watching and subscribing and we'll see you next time it's time to get inside under the air conditioner <laughs>